Both are lining up. We'll get started here in three, two, one. Ale. All right. Looks like we got Wella with the off axe and cross Nagi. Don't see that too much these days. Cheapy with the fist halberd. Oh my god, the chip combos. I don't know if those are pseudos or true, but they are brutal. Getting Wella down to 50% HP here very quickly. Now, a lot of people like that halberd just because of the moveset. Oh, with tear pops already. That lightning damage really hitting hard right now. Oh, and the storm assault. Oh no, takes Wella trapped. And that is one match down. Here we go. Three, two, one. Ale. Both blasts are out. We got uh, Sleepy still on the Albert Fist. Throwing out a Frost Pot just to see if that's some pressure. Oh my god, but does he need it? Gets in there with that Fist, and he is just a force to be reckoned with. Getting some great chip damage. Wella trying to use some hyper armor to get some hits in. Wonder what kind of infusion we have on that axe. Oh, and the catch from the Bloodhound Fang. Oh! Well, uh, the last inch centimeter of her life. Trying to get some chip damage in with that Horfrost Stomp. as a dagger. Oh, and the chip damage gets her. That will do it. All right, we got a three, two, one, ale. Both blasts up, no punishes there. Getting some freezing mists out. Uh, so, doesn't matter to answer your question. We are going to do all of the losers round one bracket first. And I I had made a mistake earlier. I thought... I could pair up Goose, Ghost Lucario and Turpy, but we actually have to wait for losers of specific brackets to come down first before we can proceed with those rounds. Ooh, getting half health on Einin. Oh, Belmonk, Tear Pop there. Getting some good spinning tech in to throw off those attacks. Uh, you won't see that much in PvE, but it is just so that other player has a hard time predicting. Oh, and the jumping, the attack as he jumps, it just, the tracking is too good. GG from Heine. Three, two, one, ale. The Heine coming out with the frost buff again, not punished for that. Oh, Belmonk's coming in really close with some fists. He rolls that frost proc, doesn't take the damage, has that damage, or, uh, uh, Debuff, rather. Heine getting some spins in there to distract his opponent, but the pressure is just too strong. He spins around, Strace gets the backstab. Throws out a good pressure tool. Heine jumps it, though. Here, Pop. Gonna get close here, folks. Both players putting in a substantial amount of pressure. The roll catches. Oh, and the catch! I don't know if Belmonk was ready for that one. He was. Heine was just too fast to bring it out. GG to both of you. What a fantastic fight to watch. Three, two, one. Ale. Boop Turpy trying to get some sort of punish, but Monkey is getting too much pressure in there. Both contestants using their spacing very wisely. Monkey switching over. Halberd back to Slurria. Both players get a little chip damage in there. Trying to fit in a drill, probably adding some spacing. Monkey trying to punish with that frozen pot. Both heroes just end up trading at once. Great spacing from both. Turpy getting in some good chip damage as well as Monkey Aim. Oh, Turpy almost gets in a backstab, but that that Elden Ring. Oh, and the the talons giving Turpy some extra space. You might need against such a long weapon. Oh no! You can't see anything, Ini? Is my screen messed up? Telescope? Okay. 
Oh, and Turpy getting the backstab. Apologies for that. Camera, camera crew was slashing there. It's a three, two, one, ale. Both players got their class up. Oh, Turpy gets in a cheeky fire pot while Monkey Aim's trying to get out that frozen spear. Both players using their space. I think Monkey knows he has a little bit longer reach, so trying to keep just a little bit extra on him. Oh, Turpy getting in a good swing. That phantom hitbox. Oh, as soon as Monkey gets in, he starts using that, that axe, though. Don't know what kind of infusion is on it, but I know that axe can be pretty devastating close range. If the frost build up on Turpy, looks like he's trying to get some extra damage with that frost. Frost, uh, Ash of War. Turpy getting in some good chip damage and bleed, bleed build up with that. Ooh, is he gonna get enough to proc? Looks like he pops. Yes, he pro he pops the bubble, gets a bleed proc. Monkey Aim's getting pretty low here. Oh, and, Mon and Monkey goes down. Turpy takes it 2 0. Turpy making good spacing here. Wow, gets a. Uh... <clears throat> yeah. That's right, Turpy is playing across the world right now. Geku getting in some good phantom procs as well. Oh, I'm sorry, let me zoom in here. Uh, both players still have their physics. Oh, tear pops. Geku got a drill off. Is the bleed building up here? I think it probably is. Geku get a bolus off. No, he has to use the pressure he has. Oh no, Turpy getting the one, two, and three. Geku is down. Three, two, one. Ale. Apologies for the camera work here, guys, but uh, we're we're in it now, and Turpy. Throwing some pots, just trying to trying to create that space. He knows he's outranged here by a little bit, uh, but he has the hyper armor, and boy, is it strong! Uh, oh! Those spins and those slashes, but the hyper armor almost getting it hit. Looks like the tears pop from both. Making some space with the blood. See what that buildup looks like. Not getting a bleed proc quite yet. He's gonna need another incantation. Oh no, the phantom procs! Playing smart here by rolling twice and the takedown! Wow. What a fantastic fight. GG, Derby, GG, Gek. All right. Nod also likes to switch up weapons, too, in the middle of the fight, so we'll see. Maybe some handy Do you count this down, Belmonk? The honorable bow. Yep. Three, two, one. Right. The bolt is in. Both players blasting out of the corners. I need buffs with Chilling Mist. Running to neutral now. Not. Watching the Neko spins, trying to be careful not to get in the range of the Zweihander and the Neko spins. The Crouch Poke can come out very unpredictably. Not breaks neutral, gets hit by the poke. Iny goes for the vortex, the frost proc, and then the R2 mix up catches. Not the roll comes. Looks like he's being patient, not trying to aggress, waiting for an opportunity. The neutral R1 hits, and the crouch follow misses. And a counter hit comes out from Iny. The necro spin in the attempted crouch poke and a backstab from Not takes Iny down, but she goes for the neutral R1, and that's game. Good fight. Three, two, one. <laughs> All right, Frostpot's coming out. We got a freezing mist into a Frostpot. Dusting, again, using his Malachus Blackblade. Trying to get a block, but he gets Frostproc. 
Aini doing some great spins, swapping out to a Royal Greatsword right in front of our eyes, getting some great crouch pokes. The damage building up both players very low, trying to get maximum spacing out, trying to get some good spins in there to distract the opponent. Oh, Aini tries to get a jumping attack, or try, maybe trying to jump over, but does not anticipate the overhead, and takes a crouch poke. Bring dusting out. Wow, EG. Alright, let's go, gamers. Three, and two, one. Okay, both players blasting out of the corner. Dagger comes out. And Sleepy Sheepy connects on the R1. Doesn't is pressuring back. But now they're both back to neutral. Looks like uh, the poison mist is coming out. Try to catch with the running R1 post. No connection. Sleepy's back to neutral. And it looks like a little bit of footsies here. The gamers are deciding how to play it. A bolus comes out unpunished. And the connection with the running R2 and the follow-ups also connect the, co the counter poke. And looks like Sleepy got them with the jump R1. Three, two, one, and five. All right, we got both contestants flashed up here. Uh, seeing very similar setups as the last match. Getting, trying to get some chip damage as uh, getting that frost resist down in combination with lightning is super strong. Both characters connecting very... Oh my goodness, flat popped already. Oh, the pressure is just absolutely insane. Cheapy taking him down. G, G. Essence are ready. Three, two, one. Play. All right. Both contestants are flashing out of the field. And we have an interesting setup on the side of Thu with the main hand coded and offhand cipher. They're both trying to aggress out of neutral, both spacing each other's attacks. TV gets roll caught by the R1. Rolls back. Gets R caught again. Roll caught again. Goes into the Ash of Thu goes into the Ash of War, but uh TV interrupts it. Here they are counter aggressing each other in the corner. Goes back to neutral now. A L2 from neutral for Thu, but gets punished by the running poke from the HTS and the off Hellbird is doing some great work with the range there. Connecting on that poke. The running R2 doesn't connect. And the running R2 from Cleavy connects the L1, and that's game. Good fight. Three, two, one. Go for it. Yeah, both contestants. Am I, am I even allowed here? You are definitely allowed here. You, if you'd like to cast, I would love you to. Um, but for for right now, I'm gonna gonna see what these contestants have to offer. Cleavy's already down to 50% HP, but as we saw last time, it doesn't matter how low you go. It's that last little bit that matters in the end. Looks like Thumaru knows he gets some good running attacks in. He can wear this one in, but Levy is just showing how much range he truly has on both these weapons. Lance Halbert is just truly a force to be reckoned with. I've seen that Ice Spear a few times throughout this, this tournament, and it is showing its strength. Every Frost proc matters. Oh no! He Knocks him out of it. Thumaru knowing it, getting a few hits in will knock him out of that ice spear and the running attack lands it. G. Three, two, one. Ale. Got both contestants flasking up, neither one going for the punish. Looks like we've got that that electric blues oh coming God. out with drunken cleavy. That Frost Lightning is just such a devastating status on any weapon. This one in particular can be just an absolute blend. And he knows he can add that extra little space he needs, keeping Fu away from him from poking him to death. Those running R1s still throwing him out. No status though, so no uh, no Phantom procs. We have uh, Boomeru with that Frost proc, though he's taking so much damage. Cleavy almost getting a punish in, but he was just inches away, or centimeters for our European folks out there. <laughs> oh, and the, the Katana offhand secures the match for Cleavy. 
GG. Three, two, one, ale. Okay, both players blasting out of the corner. Now Baby Turtle moving towards the corner. Oh, and the connect with the running, or was it the crest nice. from the straight sword? Turpy rolls back. Both engaging neutral now. Turpy looking for the opportunity to engage with the twin blade. Looks like Baby Turtle punishes the jump in and the ice spear. Damn, I'm fucking jumped by Baby Turtle. Terrible with this fucking thing. The bolts there. Damn, Baby fucking Turtle getting fucking played punish. like a fiddle right now. <laughs> Baby Turtle very clutch with his movement, rolling to neutral, aggressing with the jumping R2. And the poison mist comes up for the buff. Blood boom comes out. A little bit of bleed build up on Baby Turtle. He backs up from the twin blade. Now both players in neutral again. So he needs to address. Nice running R1 comes up from Turby. It's the turn away Baby Turtle. And the fire pot hits for good damage, but the crouch poke connects. Oh! That looks like a oh, backstab. Damn it! Who's out of the arena? Good fight. <laughs> GG. Three, two, one, ale. All right, we got Turpy and Baby Turtle both classing up. No punishes here. Turtle getting a buff out. Uh, so it looks like he's been favoring the no skill shield this tournament, using it for some good blocks against these uh, pesky physical damage dealers. Is he even blocking? I didn't see him blocking ever. He, he's using it to uh, cancel his pivot. Damn, this bit, fucking like, poison not, is nuts! Not too much. Yeah, the poison really adding some tremendous pressure here. I, oh, I didn't fucking roll right there. Baby <laughs> That's fucking annoying. Going into the crouches for some great... Oh, man. Straight sword GG's and... GG's, turtle. Ready to go. Iny in her favored crouch position. Got our... It's flashed up, Iny with the cross buff. Everybody knows how great it is on that Swy Hander. Telescope. Miss any of those attacks due to latency or a good roll, and you're still getting those frost procs. Just a couple hits. Bantoff coming in with the PS Halberds. Nobody saw this wow. coming. My goodness. Trying to. Oh, the, the oh. backstab whiffs. My goodness. These are two two opponents that I expect to see good latency with each other, so I'm very surprised mm -hmm. to see those. Must be just that tiny little box in the back it makes you whip those backstabs. Yep. Both that opponents. cross region, though. Oh, both opponents getting in some fantastic trades. Oh, Fantoff, no, caught in the recovery. A fantastic Ash of War. Ready to go. Three, two, one. Hey. Both contestants blasting up, no punishes here, and a cheeky little buff from Iny. Both contestants now have their frost procs. Fantoff gets a few phantom rolls in, or gets uh, hit with a few phantom rolls, rather. So he's got his frost high at this point. Iny making good use of her spin tech to really throw off the opponent, swapping to a Another sword right on a dime. <laughs> How is this madness happening? Everybody's using their spacing exactly as they need to. Fantop going for the PS Halberd legendary attacks. Oh, and a poke comes through, but three, <laughs> two, one, ale. Both Who's contestants blast up. We got Dominus and Sheepy. Sheepy favoring the Rusting Sword, although he just switched it up. What has he got now? Oh, he's got his Four Frost. Four Frost Stomp. He knows he just needs a few Frost Procs to get that damage. Or what do you call it? Res resistance decrease? I don't know what the word for it is. Debuff. Debuff. That's the word. Oh, and the, the Frozen Needle. Is that allowed in this tournament? Yeah, dude. Yeah. One hand it is. Yep. It's one of his preferred weapons, too. Dude. Yeah, I think it's only in love because he's in this. Fair enough. Because it's like his thing. Oh, both the contestants really using some great pressure here, getting some jumping attacks in, trying to make sure one opponent whiffs while the other one lands. 
clearing out all that ground, forcing him into the jumping attacks, trying to get a punish. With those thrusting swords, it really can be hard to punish somebody with an aerial attack. Both contestants really using their space, both very low on HP at this point. Oh, Sheepy, trying to go for the Ash of War again. Oh no, and he punishes it. Just needs a few more chips. Oh, Sheepy taking 50 damage. Every little point counts here. Switching to Royal Remains, getting that cheeky little regen in. Will he get a Frost proc off or will he use this space? Dominus just so very low. Both contestants just on a nice edge. Trying to go in for some close punches and it is so close! Dominus kills him when he's oh, well, oh punch. my god! Absolutely <laughs> insane <laughs> fight! Three, Pretty amazing. Two, one. Ale. Alright, we got Sheepy and our Sheep is coming out of the corner with the heavy crossing sword and looks like an off hand cat, is it? The offhand Uchi? Yes, okay. I think so. Okay, Ark's taking a lot of damage here to begin the fight. Looks like they're trying to trade Frost procs. The running R2 misses. He's trying to get him in the corner. Sleepy wants to reset back to neutral. They're taking the middle again. And the uh, counter aggression to trade in the middle of the arena. And looks like Ark gets a uh, punish on that roll away there. No hit with the gravity stone. Sheepy's coming back, trying to get Ark in the corner. Ark gets an L1 poke and still very close. Misses with the long range frozen needle hit. Looks like the long range core frost stomp pressure is paying off for Sheepy as a frost prop connects. No roll catch there, but the, ju the neutral jump gets punished by Ark. Another resetting again. A spark aromatic comes out. Crazy. Uh, that's allowed. Uh huh. Oh, and the spark aromatic connects on Sheepy. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. It's incredible. Three, two, one. Ale. Both contestants blast up here. Again, starting off with some good four frost stomp stomp to build up those frost procs. Not sure if he has frost on his halberd though. I didn't, didn't notice frost procs there, but for this frozen needle only needs a uh, few good phantom hits before that frost kicks in. Dominus playing it safe, making sure he's not getting boxed in here. Really making good use of that spacing. Showing the aggression that they need. GP seems prepared for those rolls, though. Talisman swapping. That extra damage negation. Both contestants really showing their roll discipline. This aerial attacks connect with the PS Rapiers. It's crazy to see those in this tournament, and the aggression is too much, my goodness. Dominus showing us how oppressive those can be. EG to both contestants. Go. Both players in? Hey. Alright, both players blasting no punches there. I need boss to the chain this in the corner moves to neutral. The gravity stone gets jumped. And Ark is gauging the movement. Tries to pressure with a jumping R2, but misses gets a poke in. And looks like the frost pack was rolled, no connection on the kit. There's a catch there in the turn away, but the miss of the impaling thrust maybe give Aini an advantage to start the vortex. Arc counter pressures with a poke, but just has to slowly find the opportunities to hit. He knows that Aini can hyper armor through anything he throws out, but looks like he got a long range frost proc with the uh, R2 there. Now going for the spark aromatic, but Aini has that space, uses the opportunity to bull us from the frost. Now into the wiggle tech and the necko spin catches with the crouch and gets punished from the neutral jump. Now moving out to neutral again. I need jumping and fainting. Goes for the crouch poke, which arc spaces, but now getting 
pokes twice, caught in the vortex, tries to counter aggress with the L1, but no connection, and then pokes, catches Aini out of the air, now they're back to neutral, very close fight here, people. Aini pressuring with the crouch poke, looking for the vortex opportunity, and the spark automatic again, Aini just runs away from it, the trade from the hyper armor, and the roll catch crouch poke for the win. Very nicely fought, very good fight. Okay. And we have both contestants flashed up here. Tiny getting that Frost buff going. Both contestants, again, relying on Frost just to make sure when they land a hit, it really matters. Dominus really respecting the range of that pokey sword. Crouch attacks are just absolutely wild from Aini. Spin tech makes it so you never know when one's truly going to land. And as before, she switched it up back to an girthy Pokemon. Just to ensure that those attacks truly connect. Although the vertical on it is just not the best. Sometimes, uh, again, you just don't know if those legs are having their hitbox removed or not when they're in the air. Good fish up there. Oh, thank you, Sheepy. I just received your video. Oh man, both contestants very close now. Trying to maximize their space. Neither have frost on them, so uh, might need a couple more hits. Spark aromatic coming out again and devastating blow on Aini. Once again, both players respectfully choosing to let each other class, and I need the chewing mist buff. Looks like once again they're engaged in neutral, which I need has been able to control a lot, but this time Ark is getting some nice pokes into the running R2 in the follow up. Crouch poke misses there. Ark is looking to play with a little bit of the different space and not feeling confident about the spark aromatic, but a crouch poke connects there, and the roll of the proc. Looks like Ark's choosing not to bolus, just can't really escape the range, and the Royal Great Sword comes out on the side of Aini. The neck was spinning in the middle, and looks like Ark is going for the ranged R2 repeatedly, trying to get one of those connects. It does connect while Aini is in the air, and then he scores a follow up. Now Aini connecting with the Crouch Poke, Vortex, the mix up movement, and the three hits in a row. Art confidently counter aggresses out of that though, getting a hit in and an L1 connects for 310 damage. Looks like maybe there's some status, a phantom proc on that uh, R2 kick there. Now they're back to neutral. They're both engaged. They're both choosing when to engage. Arc staying spaced out in the corners and Aini in the middle waiting for that spark aromatic to come out, not choosing to go in directly to punish it. The rare jumping R1 on the side of Aini and they go back to neutral. Oh, the trade, the running R2 trades with the crouch poke counter hit. Now Arc is in danger of getting one hit with the blue feather on. Only goes 62 damage there. That was that was insanely low. He was blocked. All right, twenty six. Oh, it was a block. I yeah, see. they they and blocked the it. And the connect on the running R one. Wow. In absolutely insane to watch. I'm choosing to run in and punish there at the end. Three, two, one. Okay. I need versus a rhythmic pulse. Punishes with the Swift Flintstone Charge. We haven't seen that much, but it is a good play. Hits another Swift. Look at the free chip damage at range. Just staying away. Trying to get in as many of those little long range clips as possible and connecting the running R2. Now another chip and a running R1 connects. I know he's looking for spots to pressure without getting poked by one of the Swift Flintstone Shards. And Rhythmic Pulse is really adding those up. Now I need moves into pressure and catches with the Crouch R1 now. The roll catch timing, but rolls the frost pop proc. No hit. And now it looks like they're both resetting. Looks like I'm going to do aggress again. Two pokes in a row. With the vortex, the delayed poke comes in for the third hit. Pulse finally rolls out of range. Maybe looking to counter pressure here. A few panic rolls, and now they're back to neutral and the long range pokes again. Choosing that strategy of stay away. 
and uh, space is the crouch poke well, and I need looking to aggress again. And the ice spear comes out of a from a rhythmic pulse, of course. Why wouldn't it? The best ash of war in the game, according to Pulse. Now I need some corner pressuring and catches the roll, but no follow up. They're both at low health, but I believe that Pulse is one hit here. Now they're going to the corner, and Aini's trying to pressure, trying to finish out Pulse. Looks like the framed ice cube comes out again. And the movement, the strafe around coming from Aini, Pulse is just looking for opportunities and is not seeing any way. He knows that there is hyper armor advantage on the side of Aini, and they are playing carefully here. Continuing to try to poke at range. Now Aini's coming back with the jumps. The movement goes for the crouch poke, but the strafe and roll comes out from Pulse. Rolls back, gets another connection with the swift glintstone, and they are... The oh, the first part of the Ice Spear connects, but the second part does not because of the angle and the crouch poke catches, but not enough to win. There's a tear proc. For Aini and now more swift flintstone shards maybe trying to finish the whole game with those here we go Aini's going back out to the middle getting poked by the Helbert R1 no catch with the ice spear comes back for the crouch him at one HP in the crouch vortex finish and then another one it's kind of exactly yeah. yeah I was like is it a boy's equation or I'm... yeah I guess it was a hitbox it... thing right yeah I think so it's just all that micro spacing and movement on strafing. Okay, go go ahead, Janos. Yeah, we're seeing, oh my gosh, some fantastic frost build up from both opponents already. Um, yeah, about half, half health on on either. The, the, the spinny tech is just too strong. Beyblade is like the most powerful tech in Elden Ring right now. And we're seeing quite a bit of it here today. One going with the vertic vertical Beyblade, the other going with the horizontal. We'll just have to see whichever Beyblade is the best here. <laughs> after a few bounce together. Rhythmic again going for some good chip damage. Both both heroes have their frost rocks reset. Normal. Oh my goodness. Oh, and Arrhythmic goes for a cheeky Ash of War right in her face. Both opponents getting very low here. I don't think either opponent will get the vortex they're looking for, but time will Hell, Aini trying to throw the pressure in there. Rhythmic showing really good roll discipline. Aini's not able to get any catches out. Both opponents maximizing their space. Aini maybe going for another another crouch poke. Chip damage gonna be enough. We're going to see another clean trade by Aini. Here pops. Aini. Oh, Aini gets the initial swing. Connects. Takes out a rhythmic pulse. Wow. GG.